Hi, welcome to another episode of Art Studio. I'm your host Wayne Clements for the next half hour, so let's have a little bit of fun. So as you can probably uh, see, we've got a bit of something happening on the canvas here. Um, what I've actually done is I've got a bit of a black acrylic here. I thought it might help the way we're going to paint this painting. It's going to be a stump. Uh, so we've got the darks of the stump, so I thought it might be easier instead of getting too muddy about the darks, we'll make that acrylic. So that's nice and dry. So I've actually got a little bit of white around this, very, very lightly, as we normally do with our paintings of the sky in the light areas. And the reason for that is because it just helps the sky where the colour blends together easier when it gets on the canvas. Okay, so we're just going to go around our palette at the moment and have a look to see what colour scheme we've got. We've got some titanium white, of course. We got a little bit of this ultramarine blue. I was also tinted that, so that's got some white in it. Got some yellow ochre, almost straight out of the tube. I've got some here that I've played around with. Got a little bit of orange in some of this as well, with some white, and got some volution violet there. Got our uh, orange out of the tube. Got some burnt umber out of the tube. Got some black that I mixed up in case we need some, in case we lose our darks, and also a nice dark there, which is a, uh, a dark violet, blue violet. Also, we've got a little bit of yellow here. I don't know if you need that, but anyway. Might come into play. A few lights here in a uh, few places, maybe. Okay, we're going to go straight into our sky. We're going to pick up a bit of that blue. So up nice and high first. Not real worried about going over this, because we can just wipe this off. So we don't want to see any white coming through behind it, so make sure we get the paint all around it. And that's what we're after. Once again, the old crisscross. With the brush gets the paint on beautifully into the canvas. Okay, so get that paint in, just swish it around, make sure you get it behind that post as well. A little bit more colour back in there. Even if you've got to just spread it out first just to get a bit of paint on. Okay. A little bit of foliage in that here and as well. I'm going to a little bit of play with this, just see what happens. Might go a little bit darker up the top there, a few places maybe. Okay, pick up a little bit of that blue violet that we had. And just get it up the top. Now we can just blend that around to give us that bit of a sky look, a bit of depth. Then we get a softer brush here now I think, just to soften that down just a little. That's the way. Nice soft brush just to blend that, it's like two inch one that we have in our kits. Beautiful brushes these, they're bristle, bristle brushes, so they're great for uh, blending, they're great for stippling, you can do lots of things with them, so always got one in my kit. Okay, got a little bit of too much light happening just over there, so we can just, just to give it that little bit of depth. Okay, now we can just wipe a bit of that out, we're not really worried about that, look. And go over that colour we've got there. I'm not too concerned about it. That's basically what we're after. There we go. Good enough. Okay, so we're going to get straight into this with a bit of colour. And what I'm going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a play, as I said. So I'm going to pick up one of our ridges, our ridge and knife. As you can see, it's been got a bit of a serrated edge on it. And I'm going to pick up some colour straight away here. I'll spread these out and see if we can get a little bit of a Something happening here, like a bit of a old log look, so we can get that straight down the side there, sort of creating the effect of like striations, or an old log look. Okay, starting to look all right already. Just before I do that, I might pick up a few. Um, things for a bit of a background here. In fact, I'll pick up that brush right there. A few darks. And just a few things coming out behind the, the stump, of course. A little bit of a wriggle here and there, doesn't matter. Get a bit of the light in it as well. And One coming further up into the picture. Don't worry about it too much, it's just a bit of scruff here and there. You can even get your brush or tissue or something and just get a little bit of something happening down in there. 
So you can get the effect of a little bit of foliage against the base of it, even going up the trunk. Pick up a little bit of that yellow ochre if you like. Go across the front, front of the trunk if you want. And pick up a little bit of that light. It's a light and chate, that's what we're looking at here in this painting. And we're just going to go back now to our ridge knife. While we're playing around with that, we can go over the top of that now, like it's gone behind the log. That's why I thought I'd better throw that in there now. And we're going to come around the corner in some of these colours. So we've got our violets, yellow ochres, our lights that we've mixed up, start getting them into there. And around the back here as well. So that's almost in the black there. So we can even get that in. Put a little bit of black in there. I think it was a good idea having to uh, put that black back in the background. It's really given us that striking dark in our painting, so it's made it so much easier in this particular case if it's dry. So that's worked out really well. Looking good. Okay, a little bit more of that blue violet in the shade side of that trunk. Stump, whatever you want to call it. And a bit down there as well. Giving a bit of the old burn number down the side. Okay. It's looking okay, so that's our little basically you've got the guts of the stump happening there. We can go straight past that stuff so it looks as if it's going behind the stump. That's what we're after. And a bit of shade colour there as well. There we go, that's the effect we're after. And put a bit of that back in as well. So it's a lot of fun, you can play around with this. You can see the effects we're getting with it. We need to use our liner shortly and get into that as well and see if we can get a bit happening with that. See if we can make some, get some effects happening with our liner as well. So we're just coming up to our break. And before we go too much further, get too involved, get that hair out of there. And I'm trying to make this look round. So that's the effect we're after there. Good time to have a break and come back, check it out. Come back and join us and we'll continue on. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for our second stage in our painting. We've got the basics of our stump in here. Now we're going to have some fun. We can just play around with it. And we were playing with our rigid knife, so I think we can probably keep going with that. In fact, get a few more lines in there. We don't want them too straight either, so even if you can give it a little bit of a twist or something in there, and break it up, you know, a dead straight looking post, especially if it's gonna be an old rickety looking one that's been around for a while, and had a few white ants through it and whatever. Okay, I think we can probably do with a bit of brushwork now, and I tend to want to use one of these for this, and that's our long, long haired liner. Great brushes. Don't forget, this is the uh, water soluble oils, of course. Straight into that, and we're going to go straight down that side and break that up right there. Okay, now we can do a little bit of that. We probably want more darks in there than anything, but we'll get a few lights in as well. Okay, let's get that oil happening. It's not running, so it needs a little bit more oil. Now we can get that hit and miss business happening too with our brush. It's a great look, that. And we can get a few darks back in there too. And we can do that right now because I think it needs it. Okay, once again, plenty of that on your brush. We're going straight into the into the dark and we're going to put a few bits and pieces here where it's breaking up the old stump splitting here in places and cracking up a little as it would out in the weather and we can get that twist action happening down there as well so get a few following each other like it, like it actually would. One big long one right down there. 
Okay, you can even follow it a little bit, make it look a little bit more realistic. Follow the line, I should say. How's that? Okay, just gonna come over into the dark a bit here now. Pick up a bit of this burnt umber on that, we got happening. Pick up a bigger knife, I think. A little bigger tool. And we can put that back over in there. So you can have a little bit of fun with it, play around with it. There we go, starting to look all right. violets down there is looking good, our shade colour, even a bit of the blue violet as well. And in fact it's not a bad time to just go over that with a bit of that violet, just to give it a little bit of shade colour, just, just there as it's coming around the post, the light. There we go. Now we're going to throw, throw a few more highlights in here and there, highs and lows on our post. So we've got some darks in there, so we'll do that first. Okay. Get that brush to roll. That's half the half the battle is getting the brush to do the, what you want it to do, and if you don't get the medium right and the brush right and the canvas right, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so, that's the effect we're after, about there somewhere. And a bit more shadow back over in here too, I think, while we're at it. And even put a little bit more of that back in there somewhere, here and there. Pretty little twigs and things. Even pick up a few bits of yellow ochre and things in there and just tap them in. A little bit across the trunk as well. Bottom of the trunk. A few darks down the side there. And a little bit of light there as well. So it looks as if it's, yeah, that's the effect I'm after. Just as if that's in the background a little bit. That's better. Okay, just a few more little lines here and there. A few of those dark ones down there too. Maybe just a bit of a hole here and there. Like I said, play around with it. It doesn't have to be exactly like the stump. Use your imagination. You might have two stumps. Combine the two. Okay, while well we've got that little brush, I'm going to put in some barbed wire, so it's going to come from all over the place, this. Okay. Little barbed wire, look, and one coming straight through there. Like I said, if you don't get it to run properly, oil is the secret. You need more oil on your brush. I get that a lot from people. Want to know why maybe it's not flowing properly or it's not blending properly. It's usually what it is. Okay. Need a little bit of light on there now where we've got that barbed wire. So we know we got it coming around that side of the post, so we can put a bit of light on there. And around there as well. Get a bit of a wriggle on with it. A little bit of a wriggle because we can go over it again and create that effect, that barbed wire or just wire look if you like. You could even leave it like that. We'll give it a little bit of a Barbie look. Okay. And we can do that right now. Be a rough looking wire, this. Well, that's good, it's going to add to the effect of the painting. Oh, 
over exaggerate it just a little so it can stand out. And don't forget the little barbs on the barbed wire, very important part of it. That's the part you've got to avoid. Okay. Just put them around where they're going to stand out. And so what you're going to do is just give it that effect of the barbed wire. There we are. Not too far out of the picture. Got a fair bit done here. We've got a little bit to do for our last stage, but we're getting there. Put a little bit of light on that too if you want. Just a couple of spots here and there. And then I'll also highlight that barbed wire as well. You watch when we put that light on there just where it needs it. So we'll get another thin brush, another liner, a little bit of light on that. And okay. We can play around with that barbed wire. There you go. There's those highlights. Makes all the difference. Come back, still got a little bit of work to do, but it's getting there. Come and see you then. Okay, thanks for coming back and uh, joining us for our last little segment here in our stump painting. So it needs to come alive a little bit, so I find probably needs a little bit of colour, I think. So we can do that very quickly. First of all, I just notice that's not going right through there, so I'm going to create that effect a little bit better. That's what we're after. And that one down there as well. Okay, so we've got the stump looking okay. Probably need just a couple of little things, like maybe just a little bit of that blue in there. Down this side of the, of the stump painting. And the dark side of the stump. Get a little bit of reflected light in there. And even across the bottom as well. So we can go with a few flowers, I think. And one of the colours I was thinking about using was like a nice pink. But if you want to have a look at this, this is actually just cad red with white. Gives you a nice pink. And this one here, I'll clean my knife, is a magenta. I'll do it right next to it. So it with a little bit of white gives you a really, well, a little bit more intense pink and actually beautiful colour. So just to bring it alive, I think we might go with a little bit of that, even maybe a little bit of both and get a bit of colour happening in this painting. So we can do that a few ways. I like to use one of these most of the time. So we'll get our darks in first. And we'll get that across in places in the trunk. It's looking better already. And a couple of reds over there, a little bit of magenta in there as well. Okay, and a little bit of white on those. I can even see a couple of spots straight away where it's going to need a little bit of blue back down there in the darks. So we need that little bit of light, a little bit of, even a little bit of yellow on there. Wouldn't hurt. Yep, look at that, let's bring it alive. Even across the front there as well. Bit of yellow oak around the back side. Okay, as I said, just a little bit of blue down in here in the shade. And starting to look okay, we can actually get a little bit of that. And just take it a little bit higher, just to give it that. Just needed something up right up and down just to bring it painting up just a touch higher there. And also, just a few of these spots on the sides. Not everywhere, just highs and lows, hits and misses. That's what we're looking for. Okay, even put a couple over here if you like. And that's looking okay. And even give a little bit of depth if you like, and we can do that. 
just by putting a couple of birds back on the distance even. We still got to put a few lights on on some of those uh, bits of barb too just to highlight them. Certainly uh, makes a big difference when you can get that happening. So another one there and even maybe a couple going off out of the painting as well. There you go. Alright, so just a couple of those spots down there. Don't forget all the paintings are for sale on the website and you can have a look at those and all the proceeds from that are going to the RACQ Care Flight. Fantastic cause, so jump on board. It's been supported very, very well, so they are selling, so check out what's left or the new ones that come on board. You never know, you could be the lucky owner and also help care flights, so everyone's a winner. All right, just a few highlights on some of those spots, like I just said earlier. I stuck my finger in the paint severely. Okay, here we go. And a few highlights on those bits of barb, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Can hardly see those, but that's all right. It's just a hint that we're after. A little bit of barb up there as well. And just, just a bit of a hint of some light coming down there. There we go. Not a bad little scene. I put the uh, frame on it shortly, but just before we do, I'll even put a little bit more of that colour in there. And there's that yellow ochre, especially the lighter one. Just in a few spots here and there, like a few buds. Off there, that's what it needs, I think. It needs a little bit more of a highlight. And some lights at the end. Okay. That's brought our eye up a little. We haven't got them at the same height, so that's looking good. Just a little bit more wriggle, I think. I think that's a dark colour, is it? Yep. Just a little bit more wriggle on some of these spots down here. Just to help our log long just a little. And don't forget at the back there as well, so. So that looks as if it's behind there. That looks okay. All right, just about done, I think. Work out where we're going to put our signature. In fact, I think I could probably just do with a couple of little highlights, like even almost going straight into the yellow on a few spots, just to highlight a few things. There we go. Like that's going around the back of the log. That's going around the front of the log. Okay, just a few little highlights. Okay, that should just about do us, I think. So we get a signature on there. And what are we going to use for a colour for that? Okay, let's go with a bit of this red. All right. Signatures on. Okay. Don't forget if you want to have a go, we've got the kits available. You can check them out online. There we are, finished product. And look, surprise yourself. That's the kits. You've got the DVD and everything in there. All the brushes that you see me using here and the knives, etc. Follow the DVD, you've got the colour wheel. A lot of fun, don't think you can't do it. Okay, so that's just finished off our painting there. But it's not done until the uh, frame goes on. So there's the finished job now. Frame ready to hang, looks great, stumped. Hope you enjoyed that, hope you picked up a few tips. Look, We look forward to seeing you next time on Art Studio. Bye for now.